The ship would continue its way on to North Seymour, where the next day we would make landfall. North Seymour is another flat uplift island. The land iguana population on nearby Baltra Island was exterminated during World War II when the U.S. built an air base there. But in the early 1930s, scientists had moved 70 of the land iguanas to North Seymour. Those long-lived original iguanas still live there today, although they don't breed on North Seymour. However, captured specimens have been successfully bred to repopulate Baltra. A more commonly spotted reptile is the lava lizard. This one has an unusual forked tail. And occasionally we would see the endemic Dromachus snake here as well. Dromachus is a non-venomous constrictor that feeds on lava lizards, iguana hatchlings, insects, rats, and perhaps birds. But most people come to North Seymour to see its bird populations. Swallow-tailed gulls nest among the rocks near the shore. These birds have a curious displacement behavior, which is a behavior performed when an animal isn't sure what to do, like nail-biting in humans. In this case, the birds frequently bend down and stare at their own feet for a few seconds at a time. The island also has a large population of blue-footed boobies. It's easy to see the boobies in their nests feeding their chicks, since often they'll nest right in the middle of the trail. And you can often see their famous sky-pointing courtship behavior. North Seymour is most famous for its frigate bird populations. These magnificent flyers don't have waterproof feathers, so they can't enter the water. But they dexterously pluck fish from the surface and even harass other birds until they throw up their own catches. The juveniles have white heads, as shown here. The adult males inflate a bright red guller sac on their throats and shake it to attract females who fly overhead. This male is in the process of inflating his guller sac. In the afternoon, the Galapagos Explorer would return to Puerto Ayora. This time, instead of sending the seven-day passengers up to the highlands, everyone would visit the Charles Darwin Research Station. This is the best opportunity people have to see the giant tortoises after which the Galapagos Islands are named. Many of the tortoises can no longer be seen in the wild because they were hunted to extinction or near extinction. But the research station breeds the tortoises for eventual repopulation to their respective islands. The larger dome-shaped tortoises evolved on islands with plenty of vegetation, whereas the saddleback tortoises evolved the distinctive raised front of their shells and longer limbs to allow them to reach scarce vegetation on the drier islands. Santa Cruz is also a good place to see Darwin's finches, which can be found all over the islands. The variety of bill lengths and shapes in the 14 species allows them to exploit different environments, something Charles Darwin noticed when he visited the islands in 1835, and which helped lead him to develop his theory of evolution by natural selection. Other birds often found on Santa Cruz and many other islands include the yellow warbler, the yellow-crowned night heron, the endemic lava heron and lava gull, and the Galapagos mockingbird. I also once spotted a school of golden rays swimming in Academy Bay. Before returning to the ship, we would again release the passengers to shop or explore. Sometimes that night, a few of the guides and other crew would return to Puerto Ayora to have dinner and get away from the job for a while. Here I am with two other guides and the public relations officer. Then the ship would return to Puerto Bacariso Moreno, where the weekly schedule would begin again. There are three additional islands we visited on rare occasions during the course of the year when circumstances made it feasible or necessary. One was Mosquera Islet, between North Seymour and Baltra Islands, which is little more than a sandy beach covered with sea lions. Another is the island of Santa Fe, which is known for its pallid subspecies of land iguana, its forests of huge tree-sized prickly pear cactus, and its rarely seen endemic rice rad. Once, while snorkeling during my first visit to the Galapagos, I watched a sea lion playing with a moray eel by tugging its tail to prevent it from escaping into the rocks. And the third island is Santiago. I visited two locations there during my time in the Galapagos. The first is Puerto Egas in James Bay, primarily known for its fur seal grotto, which is the best place to see and swim with Galapagos fur seals. 
These pinnipeds are actually sea lions that evolved from a cold water South American species, not the California sea lion. Next to the fur seal grotto is the humorously named Darwin's Toilet rock formation, which fills and flushes with incoming wave surges. The second location on the opposite side of Santiago Island is Sullivan Bay. It's a great place to see dramatic lava formations, especially the fields of ropey pahohoi lava. Here is an ornito, which is a bubble of lava that cooled and solidified as it burst. While snorkeling in Sullivan Bay, I took these shots of a penguin swimming nearby. So these were the islands we visited during my time aboard the Galapagos Explorer, but there are many more sites I never got to see. In addition, I had a lot of great friendships and romances aboard the ship, some of which have lasted to this day. After I left, I acquired my Naui Dive Master license in the hopes of eventually returning to guide dive tours. But the political climate in the Galapagos had changed and foreign guides were no longer quite as welcome. So I moved on to other things. I later learned a drunk helmsman crashed the Galapagos Explorer into an island, and it's since been replaced by the Galapagos Explorer 2. Although being a full-time naturalist guide is a demanding job, and it's not something one normally does for very long, I truly miss the experience and consider it one of my fondest memories.